Look, Jonathan, I'm just upset, okay? I got things I need to get off of my chest, okay? I, I need- I need you. I need to vent right now. I'll let you get back to your studies after this, okay? I just- Right now, I need to vent. <laughs> We're two episodes in to Marvel's What If. We're two episodes in! And it's already... It's already jumped the shark. Irreparably. Ooh, I'm not okay. I'm not happy. This isn't good. This is not a happy pup video. I'm sorry. Alright? I always try to be positive. I'm not a stickler for plot holes or anything like that. It takes a particularly egregious thing to rub me up the wrong way, okay? I, I like... I like Marvel, I, I like comic books, I like these characters, I like this universe, I, I, I like TV, I, I like TV shows. This here? Ooh boy, I, now this has me, ooh this just does not butter my croissant, I'm telling you now. This does not butter my croissant! First, a, a few quick words on episode one. What if Peggy Carter became Captain Britain? I like that episode fine, I, I, I thought it was pretty good. I, I will admit, one of my concerns about this show was that we'd be seeing more of characters, like the MCU's legacy characters, that have died. So of course we do get to see more of Steve Rogers now, and, and I thought that Endgame was like the perfect swan song for that character. Same goes for Tony Stark and a bunch of other characters, and we're seeing them again here, and it does feel really weird. And, and that, that's no slight to Josh Keaton, no! Josh? Josh Keaton, who voiced uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers, like, he, he did great. He, he did really good. He was a good stand-in for Chris Evans, and the episode overall was fine, but it just, it feels weird going back to the beginnings of the MCU that we know after just finishing it. Feels like we're digging up old graves. Not a fan of that, but that, that, it's okay. That's just a personal preference thing. I think Endgame was a good swan song, and it's just, it feels weird to have them dug up for this. So I'm not looking forward to seeing Iron Man in future episodes, but okay, okay, fine. Like rolling with that strong episode, uh, I, I thought, you know, the kind of sequence of events of uh, Peggy Carter getting the Tesseract, allowing Howard Stark to make like an Iron Man suit for Steve Rogers was a cool way of folding things in. And I definitely liked that. It proves that Peggy would have liked Steve Rogers, even if he wasn't a hunkish, beautiful Chris Evans man. She still loves him as even just a scrawny little not Chris Evans man, a scrawny little Josh Keaton man. Again, I find it so weird that had it just been for the Tesseract, Howard Stark would have been the man to make Iron Man effectively, and it would have been Steve Rogers instead. Not sure how to feel about that, and as you know, I've, I've got my reservations about the What If series. Like, it, it kind of feels like, what if this character was this character? Like, I, I would rather we explored bigger things than that. But like, to all intents and purposes, this is a good sort of Agent Carter thing. It's it's a good way of doing Captain Britain in the show in a way. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a consistently entertaining kind of retread of the first Avenger, but with some different like changes here and there. It was fun. It I, I guess you could say the ends justify the means, even though I'm a bit uncomfortable with digging up old stories that already mean a lot and have concluded. Moving on to episode two though, this is the single worst thing the MCU has ever done. The absolute low point of the MCU so far. Move over Incredible Hulk, in my opinion. We have a new low point, and this time it's not, it's just okay. This is legitimately, legitimately egregious. So it's, what if King T'Challa were Star-Lord? Again, who asked, but let, let's just go through this. Basically, I, I really like King T'Challa, and you know, having Chadwick Boseman back as King T'Challa is a wonderful thing. I loved hearing him. He turns in such a nice performance. He does such a great job here. But, oh boy, this is a whole can of worms. This is a whole can of worms. So basically, when King T'Challa becomes Star-Lord, he basically becomes the Gary Stu version of Star-Lord. Where basically everyone loves him and he changes the entire universe for the better. So for one thing, Yondu just kind of takes the wrong kid and just leaves. Like, you'd think he'd maybe go back to get Peter, even if he, you know, gets close with T'Challa, you'd think he'd still get Peter with him, you know? As it's kind of important, 
Now, and you mean to tell me that to these aliens, all humans look the same? Okay, I can kind of roll with that. But it's like, I don't see why he wouldn't go back for Peter. So they basically get the wrong kid and they just kind of roll with it? I don't know, it seems like kind of an oversight, that. But then there is the point that completely ruins a decade worth of storytelling. We are introduced to Thanos, who's allied with the Ravagers. Now, the idea of good Thanos, I like that, like a redeemed Thanos. What if Thanos were to be redeemed? I really like that. And I would think that to get to that stage would be an arduous process, surely, right? It, it would be a long sequence of events, or, or maybe Thanos just was born better, you know? Maybe he was just a better person from the get-go. But the divergent event in this episode would have nothing to do with Thanos' birth, because the divergent event was Yondu not going to pick up Peter Quill. So okay, it must have taken some real events to turn Thanos, right? Right? No. No, it didn't. Star-Lord had an argument with him, which turned him good. He suggested alternatives to genocide, and Thanos was just like, good idea, buddy. And now he's allied with the Ravagers. So you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me, that the death of Iron Man and the death of half of the fucking universe, obviously a return, but the whole of Endgame, the whole of Infinity War, all of that stuff, the Guardians of the Galaxy as we know it, nebulous traumatic past, all of that could have been prevented by having an argument. And said argument is not a T'Challa specific thing. You mean to tell me that no one else in the universe could have told Thanos that there are better alternatives to genocide. When this happened, my jaw hit the fucking floor and the episode was ruined. I couldn't, I, I, I watched the rest of it, but I couldn't focus. I was just like, did you really just do that? Did you really just do that, Marvel? Just fucking completely, completely undercut 10 fucking years of storytelling all just to make King T'Challa look good. Not only is that the highest fucking form of character assassination, but it completely cheapens the biggest box office juggernaut in history. You mean to tell me all this time Peter Quill could have just been like, hey, don't do genocide, just make more resources. And Thanos would have listened? I put it like, like here's the thing, that there's, there's rationality to this, but I figured that Thanos in Infinity War, the reason he got to where he was, was because he's a mad titan. He was that stubborn because he's not fucking sane. And he even says that he's mad in this episode. But it's all in a, a heroic moment. I'm sorry, man. Pop.exe has stopped working. That. Oh, oh jeez, oh man. That's not how you do it. That is not how you do it. That's, uh, it, it's a lazy plot device. Just to say, oh yeah, T'Challa convinced him. Is that it? You could have done more, you know. You could have had T'Challa, you know, initiate a long process, you know? But it was just an argument? You mean to tell me no one else thought of that? All of us thought of that. That was part of what was so interesting about Infinity War, was we were all thinking that, and just seeing Thanos so committed to this shows that he wasn't sane. He was not a sane individual. Now, of course, look, I'm not trying to say this is objectively bad or anything, but this really rubbed me up the wrong way, especially when you factor in that there is a multiverse. If you just appreciate it for what it is and enjoyed the ride, all power to you, that's awesome. But for me, the ramifications here are just too steep. I get it. T'Challa is a persuasive and awesome guy. I get that. But like, I thought the alternatives to genocide were pretty obvious. So like, I thought there must have surely been a reason why Thanos was so committed to this route. That being possibly that he's insane, but he wasn't a dumbass. Like, surely he could have factored these other things in here. But then it just makes the rest of the MCU look really stupid. Like, Thanos in Infinity War wasn't really in a hurry 
to, to wipe out half the universe. He, he was working against the Avengers, but he was quite casual about it, even down to the fact that he wasn't all in his, like, ceremonial armor and stuff. So surely someone could have sat him down and tried to factor that in. Heck, Black Panther is in that movie. Perhaps he could have tried that. Sure, there were hordes of alien armies coming at him, but he could have gotten a megaphone or something, got to a vantage point. I'm sorry, it's just not this super deep point that only T'Challa can make to me. And it undercuts the credibility of Thanos as a villain, but it also undercuts all the other characters that just resorted to violence and makes everyone in the MCU look really, really silly. And like the whole point of Infinity War and Endgame was like, there's no other way, but suddenly he can just be talked out of it. I'm sorry, it doesn't work for me. It's also like, Doctor Strange said he saw like thousands of other realities, and you know, there was only one where Thanos didn't wipe out half the universe. So he didn't see this, I guess. He could have just gotten a Disney Plus subscription. Oh man. Maybe I'm overreacting a little bit. Maybe it is just a bit of disposable fluff entertainment. I hope it is. I hope that, you know, maybe Maybe the Divergent event was that Thanos was born more rational in this universe or something, maybe. But it's not in the episode. But that's my way of being able to retroactively look back on the Infinity Saga and not say it's fucked. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we hear more from Chadwick Boseman in maybe like the Marvel Zombies episode or something, just any other episode. Because this, this isn't a worthy send off for him, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm trying not to factor that into this too much. Because, I don't know, maybe he would have loved this episode. I don't know, tastes differ. But, like, I, uh, not impressed. But what do you guys think? Comment below and discuss. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, hit subscribe, hit the like button. And in the description below are links to my different social media feeds, including my patron, where you can make me feel a lot better. Special shout out goes to the patrons in the $10 tier. That is Marcus Ward, Sirius the Skeptic, Biotinarts, and Mr. SP. You guys are the best, but as for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day. Fucking good Thanos. Fuck me.